Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we show you how to take junk and turn it in to home decor that we sell or that we use in our house. It's really all about value added, design on a dime, stretching a dollar, um, always things that are free or next to it. And today I'm really excited because um, I was thinking, you know, yes, we are prepping for Valentine's Day in the shop. However, if you had some of these things on hand, you could do them for Christmas um, or you could do them really for any holiday. So we're just going to be doing some painting, decoupaging, showing how to stretch your paint a little bit if you just have a little bit of this and that. Um, so we're super excited. Comment below if you have any projects you're working on for Christmas, because I feel like this is the time of year that crafters need to vent stress about the project about the fact that they're going to be up until 3 a.m on <laughs> christmas eve yeah slash christmas morning uh finishing last minute gifts and presents and and probably not decor but you know these We're, are surprisingly dirty for never been cooked in i scrubbed the tar out of them i mean maybe so. a couple of them have been cooked in but they still have like stickers on the back the stickers have been on there for a really long time so we thrifted <laughs> We thrifted these cute heart tins. I think they were three for a dollar at the thrift store. If you can't find hearts, really any tin is fine because once you put the cute decoupage paper and use the right paint color, it'll transform it into that season. We're using JRV papers. Um, these are on our website. These are $6.95. And then if you buy two or more, you get free shipping to the 48 contiguous states. Um, so they're really good value added. We also have like what over 200 retailers that carry our paper. So if you have a retailer you like to buy from, see if they have this paper. If they don't, it's important to do that because not all of them carry all the products that we have on wholesale. Yeah, we have a ton of different products, but if they, if they don't have it and you want it, we just added these back for them to purchase on our website and they'll be shipping out in a couple of weeks. So super excited about that. First things first, before we even paint is we're going to find out which images we want to use. Trace our cards. Paper so you can see a little better. Do you have a pencil? Here. I don't, but I think there's one in the drawer over there. Okay. All right. So this is, this has been out a year. We're actually, we, we, uh, we sold our whole initial order, which is not super uncommon, but for a specialty paper like this, um, that's how popular this paper has been. Well, people order it year round because yeah. last year was kind of delayed, but we've sold between the beginning of or the middle of January last year to now, we sold a thousand sheets. I made this. the camera all dark. Oh, oh, we don't have lights on. Oh, okay, why is the camera so dark? Just, just flip the lights on. I will. Oh, you're gonna do these ones? I can do those ones today. Sorry, guys. Our studio team, i.e., us, was falling asleep on the job. Well, it's now it's darker. What did That's you do? because it doesn't have faces to look at. Okay. Let's see if it'll brighten up. Oh. There it goes. It's like magic. That's really bright. <laughs> All right. So we're, oh, our microphone's not on? Yeah, they're on. Are you yeah, muted? Are you wearing yours? Yeah. Marcia said she got hers from L&J Goods. Awesome. Um, Caitlin, can you hear us? Let us know. And Jane, I'm sorry about your eyes. Hopefully, if it starts bugging you, we're entertaining enough. You can just close your eyes and listen to the witty banter. <laughs> All right, let's get some stuff cut out for these. Um, I'm going to flip this around so I can see it good. You got a pencil? Were you able to find a pencil over there? What? We also have, okay. have the crackle stamp. We're going to be using the DIY paint and kissing booth. Very, what would you say? This is almost the Pantone color of the year, but it's the DIY color of the year. Yeah, so magenta is the Pantone color of the year, and kissing booth is going to be it, man. So while I probably am not going to do giant pieces for it with my French country design, it's a little bit more of an accent color. I'm going to be trying to incorporate it, especially in my Valentine's display at the shop. All right, let's get these cut out. Okay. Don't do it that way. I do it this way. So, yeah, I, I flipped it over. I was just trying to see what would – oh, that's a pen. It's very It'll nice. work. We'll just cut on the inside. Um, are you if you on are on the inside or on the outside? Well, just they can be slightly smaller than the shape that you're tracing out. Is what I'm saying. Okay. If you guys are channel members, uh, Facebook subscribers, Instagram subscribers, I put the link for yesterday's live video that we did. Um, we upcycled some thrift store shirts for Valentine's Day, and they turned out pretty cute. And you will get to see them no matter what on Saturday because they're going to be part of our thrift haul. One of them is going on my mannequin. 
and I put a picture of that in stories. Um, I don't think on YouTube yet, so I'll have to do that. I'm gonna cut this little guy out because he's so cute. So how many elements are on this one? A lot. I think 38-ish elements. So the nice thing about decoupage paper is you can do a lot of different things. And I had a thought, like, these are going to be Valentines where people can put candy in them and give them to somebody, and then they could be used as decor, which to me is totally value added because you're not going to throw away the vessel. Um, but if somebody wanted to bake in these, you could still do the same thing and then just decoupage a really cute tag and tie it to the top so that way they could still use it for baking. So, like, either way works. Well, there are some pretty small elements. Like, even... Even if you just wanted to take this, <clears throat> it says for you on Valentine's Day with the puppy, like that could be a tag all by itself. All right. Do you want me to help with Trace? <laughs> Excuse me, guys. You have to bear with me. I've, uh, I'm barely hanging on here. My neighbor was scolding me. And she's like, you guys need to slow down and just stop. I'm like, I, I can't really do that, but I would if I could. She's like, you're working too hard. You're going to be sick all winter. I think you just caught the kid's bug, like it just happens. Well, I was, I had like They're a like, head cold, which went into rye and lasted a long time. And then Jack had what can only be described as the flu. It was and mostly he stuff. passed that on to me because <laughs> he loves me. We're a very close family. Okay, so there's that. There's the girl busting out of the heart. I'm like, I don't want to mess up any of these, so I'm going to go around them because these are so cute for little signs. So one of the things I want to talk about, because this is probably not going to be super exciting until we get to actually finishing them, start painting things. is how to get the most out of your DIY supplies. Because I know this next year, people are really going to be thinking about getting the most bang for their buck. When Zeb and I were... Um, young and <laughs> semi broke we i used to love craft supplies but i could never justify the cost of the craft supplies so what i used to do before i even had a business all right i'll let you cut these out and we'll just not paint one that you can use as a template and i'll get the other ones painted what i used to do is if i wanted something i would think okay what can i make and sell on a facebook yard sale group or back in the day we used ksl or craigslist Craigslist not so popular anymore, but that's all we have. And I would figure out how many things I had to make to justify buying the item. And then I could use that craft supplies for my kids. And that's how I really built up my stock of craft supplies. And I would sometimes make extra. So I had extra money for like seasonal fun stuff to do with my kids. At the time, I used to do in-home daycare. And... I would be at home a lot. So I had time and I'd sit at my kitchen table and craft while I watched the kids. All right, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing. This is vintage pink. You can see it's probably about this much. So we're gonna kind of try to stretch this out a little bit. So if you have a little bit of paint and all of it's water-based, you can mix it, little this, little that. Just know that as you use different paints, um, it will change the properties of the paint. So the more DIY paint I add, the less built-in sealer will be in there. And um, also it won't be as thick as DIY, but it won't be as thin as the cottage color, if that makes sense. But all water-based paints can be mixed. Just doing a little science, so you're changing the properties. So I'm just gonna add this because I want it to be a little bit more rosy and I don't think it's even gonna take that much. Oh, now, just a hint. My question is, this is gonna be enough to paint all six? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I was gonna use a bowl, but I don't think I have to. Anyway, so I'd sit there at my dining room table and craft and watch the kids. And then I also made a lot of food from scratch. And then anytime I wanted a new kitchen tool, which I had a lot. <laughs> I remember when I made like cheesecakes and rolls for the neighborhood. Yes. I used to bake for the neighborhood and sell baked goods. And then I would use my profits to support my habit and also to buy she groceries. She really tapped into like inner eight-year-old Jamie. Yeah, I was, I was crafty. I loved back in those days, there wasn't really, YouTube wasn't a thing and there was not streaming TV. I'll when show you this YouTube color. When did YouTube start? 07? Yeah. I think is when it first got started. Delia was born in 2005. Five, yeah. Yeah. So maybe it was just starting to start, but we didn't have it. 
And I would watch Martha Stewart, and that's how I got a lot of ideas. Martha taught me how to cook. I love my mom, but she, by the time I came around, because I was a late life baby, she was overcooking at that point. So most of my baking and cooking skills have came she from the internet. The, the Food Network and Martha Stewart really saved me. So that's what I did. So if you want, like, I know not everybody's in the same financial position, but if you want like a stencil set or decoupage paper or whatever to make cute stuff for your house, like this has 38 images. If you have some scrap boards, sell some cute little signs and then keep some for yourself. Because I get asked, like, how'd you start in this business? That really is it. I would paint furniture and sell it at consignment stores and do little crafts here and there. I'll try to do a reel later where I show you how I photograph my stuff because photography is important. You got to take good pictures. We're going to set her on there after we paint it, I think. I think I need a little more kissing booth. <clears throat> hey, Donetta. She's the first one here watching from her phone and comment. Commenting. It's her first time? Is that what you mean? Yeah. So she just sure seems to say questions. To tune in. <laughs> when I was pregnant with Eliza, we were especially broke. Zeb's mom and his sister were with us because I was, I have been on um, like bed rest or whatever. Not You were I, supposed to be uh, resting. <laughs> I was not on full bed rest. It was like uh, modified, whatever. And we didn't have a lot of money. And that was a year that we did the Lego stand and that big canopy bed for Odelia's dolls. So what I did was I went to the thrift store and I tried to find whatever hardwood, inexpensive thing I could find that I could upcycle. And I took leftover fabric and made bedding, an old pillow for a mattress. And then I put, made a little canopy and bedding for Odelia's dolls. And then Harrington got a Lego organizer thing. And they were big items. So when we put them out, they made a big impact. They didn't know we was broke. It's where your DIY skills come in handy. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. This is the original color that we had, this light pink. And I wanted to just richen it up a little bit, and I didn't have enough of this anyways. And this right here is the rosy pink I made, just by adding a little kissy booth. And honestly, not enough kissy booth to really change the properties of this paint. It's probably going to go on. It'll be slightly thicker, but I'm not going to worry about sealing these. So I'll get started painting. Do you have a brush over there I can use? Yeah, I'm just going to keep cutting these out. Uh, we need six total, right? I mean, uh, you got one, I got one, so we need four more. I didn't actually cut it out all the way. Did you? It's right there. Oh. I My cutting skills are not as good as yours. I get nervous. Well, we'll get to decoupaging here in a minute. Yeah, I get nervous when I'm on live TV. Really? Yeah. I still do after all those years. I love those. I would love, do you have them in stock? Are you talking about the paper or the paint? Um, Caitlin, I'm using vintage pink mixed with kissing booth. So we have all the paint in stock. We have the paper in stock. These were in stock, but nobody bought them. So I took them out. These are found items. So it's not something that we stock. But usually you can find little baking tins of various shapes at the thrift store. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this. We picked. find the round tart style a lot. Yeah. And we, if you guys watched us a few weeks ago, we used some that hadn't sold and we hammered them flat and turned them into ornaments for our thrifted garland. So if you missed that live video, definitely catch that one. Um, we are going to decoupage the outside because my thought is people will, and I'll paint the inside eventually, but my thought is people will use these for Valentine's and so they could fill the inside with candy and then put it like in a plastic mylar, whatever, or shrink wrap it. And so I want to do the outside. Because everyone great has for... a shrink wrapper. Okay, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... If you don't have a shrink wrapper, all you need is a heat gun and shrink wrap paper. Yeah. Like our machine really is just to like do the seal. You could use a food sealer. Yep. If you have one of those food savers. You could vacuum sealer. Vacuum seal it and then just use a heat gun to make it tight. There, where there's a will, there's a way. Or just a cute little dollar store mylar bag. I think I have some. I always keep cute little bags on hand because you never know when you're going to need a last minute present. And I always, the other thing that's really good, you guys, is always oh. keep brown craft paper on hand for wrapping. Because if you have stencils or IOD stamps, 
you could totally make your own wrapping paper for whatever season. You can even put their name on it with letters. Or if you have those, if you don't like to wrap the craft bags, we use them at the shop um, because they're cute, but also because occasionally I need a gift bag. And so I just have to go to the shop and get a brown bag and then I can DIY it. All right. That one is going to dry. It is rosier in real life and will dry a little bit darker because the vintage pink dries darker. Well, strangely enough, we get hit up probably because we have teenage daughters in cheer programs, but we get hit up for raffle donations, donations. all the time. Like they'll be like, Hey, we're doing a fundraiser for cheer. You want to, you want to donate something for the or raffle? A drive or whatever. And, so, and it happens quite a bit actually. So, you know, we're always needing cute things to throw in those. If you want to purchase anything that we're using today, it's jamierayvintage.com and the cottage color line is 15% off until Friday. The, 16th is that correct the 16th it's friday the yeah friday the 16th at 11 59 p.m um and diy paint has never gone on sale before so having the cottage color on sale is a big deal so don't miss out on that i ordered a whole bunch because we were authorized to sell so i ordered a whole bunch for it and so i'm happy to pass on and sell it to you guys because i need to move it <laughs> i didn't want to run out for the sale I don't want anybody to be disappointed. And so far, I think I ordered enough. It's been good, though. Like, the, the paint has been good. It's probably more and more our go-to for thrift flips just because it goes on so smooth. It's already got a built-in sealer. Um, and if you've ever done any mass amount of painting small items, to not have to go back and seal those again and just you know, put on your finishing touches and your colored wax and you're done. Like, it's awesome. This is such a great, like, craft to do with your kids or your grandkids, too. The nice thing about these paints is they're all natural, so you can do them at your kitchen table and you don't have to wor worry about, like, killing your grandkids or your kids' brain cells. Never, they're going to need those. I never worry about that. You know, we don't have grandchildren yet. I worry about my kids' brain cells. Yes. They're important. All right. You got crazy with the ink on that one. Okay, so we're up to three now. I crazy with the ink. Well, on your outline. Oh, it's okay. Um, a, little, a little aggressive. What I'm thinking is once we decoupage them, I might come around the edge with the paint and feather it in. Uh, let's just see. Oh, uh, Sherry says, I love cottage colors. High, she did a high chair in vintage pink. Oh. oh, there's a high chair in vintage pink on her kitchen island right now. <laughs> She's working on it. It would be the sweetest high chair. I need to find another vintage high chair. We had one, but it sold. I have one that's I in pieces in the barn, like probably about eight pieces. That is never going back together. I don't know that that's true. I don't it think. It just is a matter of time. Maybe Is that the that... one that has the built-in potty seat on it that your cousin gave us? I think so. Maybe, uh, maybe a waste on Wednesday. Who knows? Good morning, Renee. That's how it would have to like show up. Tatiana said she just purchased. So excited. Thank you. Nice. Oh, you know what? This one has too much goop on it. I'm going to have to soak that. I don't want. Is it going to show up in your painting? Well, I mean, it's what we're decoupaging, but I want these. I'm going to sell these, so I need them to be nice. All right, where is my... This guy's going to have to lose his feet. He doesn't quite fit standing I, up. I need to get some lemon oil from the shop. You know, the little bottles. Oh, are we out? That works. Well, I'm just out here. We sell a scent lemon oil that has so cute. It has Zeb's original um, watercolor artwork on it. And I usually keep some at home, but I am out. So I'm having to use Dawn, which doesn't work as good to get the stickies off. Caitlin, can you link this shirt too? This is my You Are Enough shirt. This is the number one pinned t shirt that I have on uh, Pinterest. People must really like it. Zeb just likes the vintage. That's because you are enough. You are enough. Plus a little extra. Um, so DIY paint can never be um, given free shipping. So there's not free shipping on the paint. But if you order the paper and you buy two papers, there's free shipping to the 48 contiguous states. Can you pass me that one over there? Are you done tracing? Uh, no, I still need this. Well, I guess you could just use this. Right. Um, yeah, actually, that's probably smart that I don't get the scallops that I'm cutting out yeah. anyway. All right. You know, I have the thought every now and then. WD-40. The only problem with WD-40 is it's not really something I want to spray in my house, but it does work. Or you can use a heat gun, too. 
So, and I'm not going to worry. Um, it may make my images a little bit pink. You, if you wanted them to be brighter, you could use white paint in the middle. I didn't think about that. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it's second. Bright enough, I think it'll brighten them up. Yeah, I'm not worried about second coating this because after we decoupage them, I'm going to come back and paint the edges and kind of dab paint around it anyway. So I'll do the second coat then. So what Jamie's talking about, if you decoupage a darker color, this is only 18 pound paper, it's tissue paper. So it, it'll pick up whatever color is behind it. So if you do like a bright white color, it's going to brighten everything up and make the image look pretty nice and crisp. If you do a darker color, it kind of makes tones it everything back. Um, makes it, I feel like darker colors make it look really old and kind of aged. Their true color, like when you get your decoupage paper from us, it's as bright as we can get on a decoupage paper, but it's not going to be as bright as it will be when you put it decoupage. And you can put like a white background and it kind of helps, but when you actually do the act of decoupaging with white paint underneath, sticking it on there, just, it's kind of like, um, like a window cling, you know how they're kind of translucent? That's because the sun shines through. Same thing with this paper. The sun can shine through it. So that white background really helps. How does cottage colors do in blending? Um, I haven't blended a lot with it, and, but I do know that people have. But the thing to keep in mind is that once it dries, you're not going to have any more open time. So just work in small sections if you would like to blend it. Yeah, the thing about it is that with that built-in sealer, once, once you're done, once it's dry, you can't come back, spray some water on it like the DIY paint and just start working it again. Yeah. So if you really want like to blend, I would say DIY paint, unless you're wanting to blend and have the built-in, sorry, my nose is still pluggy six weeks later. Um, unless you want to have the built-in sealer, then in which case you can use this, but like I said, work fast in small sections. It, you know, you know, it might be running because it's 28 degrees outside and it's been snowing for three days. No, it's just a dang cold. Like, I'm like, one of these days I'm going to wake up and not have a runny nose. Mm, maybe. I don't know if you're that lucky. How is Deb liking being back in her tiny store? She's Zila so loves excited it. and so much less stress than having that big, huge shop. She loves it. Debbie and I were actually texting this morning, um, brainstorming for my next stencil release that'll come out probably the end of January. So I always she likes to, sure. to put her two cents in. She's like, you know, if I you make this. this stencil, I could really do a lot of good things with that. And Debbie has a huge pull on the market share. So it's always, and she always has good ideas. So it's like, yeah, we yeah. could probably make that work. Yeah. So anyways, talking to her about that, um, talking to her about our cottage color line, that's going to be increasing in the new year because Debbie makes, DIY, she owns DIY paint, and so they make our cottage colors. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing today. She's got new brushes coming out. We yes, have and actually her We have purchased a bunch of brushes. Talking with her, and and uh, I think she, we were, we shared with her our manufacturer that does our stencil brushes, but I think she ended up going with a different manufacturer. But it looks like whoever she got to make those has done a really excellent job because they look like she has abused the crap brushes. out of them, just making sure they're really good. So if Debbie, if Debbie can say a brush is still good after she's used it, it's good because Debbie makes my brush care look like I'm so good with my brushes. She abuses her brushes. Not saying you should abuse these new brushes, but I'm just saying she's done some market research. <laughs> But yeah, we've been talking to Debbie about brushes. Well, we watched the video yesterday. So. She was talking to the retailers. Is there another one of these um, over there? Oh no, it's soaking. Sorry. Um, talking to the retailers, and she was, she used it to brush paint on the side of one of her sheds that had been sitting out in the weather unfinished, and the wood was really rough and hard and splintery. And she used that brush on it, and washed up, and it was like new. No. Sure. Let me just ask how much stencil brushes are. I actually don't know off the top of my head. Most of them are in like the $10 range. Caitlin, would you link it and put the price range? I know the big fat handled stencil brush is more expensive. In fact, we're almost out of those and need to um, manufacture a new one because that was our old manufacturer. But Do I only have four of these cut out? I thought I had five. That is the world's boogerous sticker. Oh, ah, here we go. I was getting nervous. I was like, I know I just pulled one out of there. Yeah. I think I want to do this puppy, just the face of the puppy. I think I can get it on there. But yeah, Deborah, we'll get you a link to the stencil brushes here in a little bit. The stencil brushes are nice because you can use them for stenciling or waxing. 
And then as long as you like use warm water and Dawn, you can use them interchangeably, we do. I wouldn't interchange your like big brushes with wax because it's so hard to get it out of a much larger brush, but smaller brushes, you can typically use very warm water and Dawn dish soap and get that out. What do you charge for the craft you're making today? So I've actually never made these before, but these are probably gonna be like $16.95 each, which maybe sounds like a lot, but just make sure when you're selling things that you're paying for your time involved. And I always feel like there's a few different people. There's the people that are going to see you and copy you, which please do like make these. That's I will sell you the video. all the products you need to make these. And then there's the people that say, hey, you know what? I really want something that they made or I don't have time or whatever. And then we sell those because, you know, when we do a craft like this, I made one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six. There probably won't be ever any more than six. I might make something similar in the future, but we do one video and done. And so we'll sell those. And we have hundreds of thousands of followers. We'll sell these six to whoever decides they want to buy them. But then we give you the, you know, teach a man to fish. He'll never go hungry. We give you the idea so then you can go out. And then if you need products, we've also got those here. But yeah, these will be about $16.95. And I'm thinking I'm going to do a reel today, like a little short video showing you guys how I photograph them because I know a lot of people need help with that. So I'll do that later. You um, really just made me want fish and chips. Sorry. <laughs> if you, if your cottage colors has cured and I need to go back and add another coat, do I need to scuff it up or just paint? Just paint. As long as it's a paint that will stick like a DIY clay-based paint, you could totally just use that over a cottage colors. If it's like acrylic paint, you might need to scuff it up. Like if it's a paint that requires sanding, then sand it. But if it's just one of our paints, I just go over it. I use cottage color as a base coat all the time. Oh. Gray Skies makes an excellent base coat because it's really dark. And then I'll just use like a lighter color over the top or a lighter milk paint and just dress back to it. Because that's a built-in sealer, so that's nice. All right, these are mostly dry, but I'm going to grab that heat gun and dry these all the way so we could do the next step. And you know how I was worried about ha not having enough paint? We're I told fine. you we'd have plenty. We're fine. Yeah, these well, aren't going to take very paint, much. Are you only doing one coat or are you heat gunning so that So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be decoupage <clears throat> and I'll second coat them and then I'm just going to kind of go around the edge. Why am I short? Oh, I got to grab this one out of the mix. Okay, I'm going to show you guys these cl up close so that you can see which images we've chosen. They fit pretty well on these without too much. Overlapping. And cottage color will stick to metal. We do it all the time. If it's really shiny, you might want to scuff it up a little bit, but most metals I haven't had a problem with. If you do use a heat gun, even though I don't suggest it, keep your heat gun moving. With a built-in sealer, cottage color will bubble if you do not do it. Okay. Oh, Jane got her boots from that all match right. mine. How are they, Jane? She said Do they fit perfect, them? and she loves I'm them. Sure you guys are buried under snow where you're at. More than we are. So we, we get quite a bit of snow down here in the valley. But oh, I just blew one off the counter. Sorry. But we, it melts off pretty good down here in the valley. It'll stick around for a couple weeks, but we're only about 4,600 feet in elevation, whereas the mountains are up to almost 12,000 feet by us here. Um, like Harrington's been going up to the Brighton Ski Resort. He's got a season pass up there with his buddy. And they've already had 186 inches of snow up there this year. <laughs> Tracy Zepp can't go eat fish and chips out because he can't eat gluten. If he does eat gluten, it's always come up. Literally, I when I talked about fish and chips, the thought that crossed through my mind is I saw guys up on Tibble Cork already ice fishing this season. Um, I could go up there and go get some fresh fish, and then, you know, we could do the batter with the kamut. In all your spare time. But I am not good. After shovel, I feed the animals in the morning, and, and uh, after going out there early and also shoveling the snow at the shop so that, and, and salting the okay, sidewalk, the camera. I am not going back out there today. <laughs> I think we have some tilapia in the freezer from when we... Um, donated our time at the food bank and they sent some home with us. Whenever, 
whatever you at least hear, whatever you donate at the food bank, your time, whether you want to or not, they send. Well, you what happens food. is they're like, hey, this is going to go bad. We brought it. We didn't give it all away. You have to take this home. Like they make you take the food. <laughs> That's always so random. But yeah, the food bank has. They still do it. If you guys are local and you need food. On Thursdays, if you go to the Red Brick Church just off of State Street, it's right by our shop. It's just down the street. Um, Thursdays, I think it's like, you have to check Utah Food Bank for sure. I can't remember because we um, usually volunteer. Yeah, if you just summer, go to Utah but, Food Bank, it's the Lehigh location. That they, I think it's they like eight at. or nine, but they start lining up pretty early and they have a good amount of I've food. I've never food seen them run out of food. Nope. Um, what happened to your brush? I need that. We need a second coat on these, right? Or are we decoupaging? No, first? decoupage them first. Start with the coolest one. And then I'm going to second coat and then go around the edge with paint. Let's see. If I had to pick two colors of cottage colors, what would you suggest? So, Shelly, I would say probably paint blue and gray skies because the shades are really cool. It's a hard toss up for me because Unless you're... I'm, I'm white linen and paint blue. I, I would go those two because you could do tons of stuff with that and mixing. If you have other colors though and you want a really good base coat or you want a stencil, I love um, gray skies and white linen for stenciling. If you need a really great soft pink, vintage pink, this has Kissing Booth added to it, but vintage pink is really good. So I guess it just depends. And then vintage mint is really great for a fun, bright color. And if you want to tone it back, you could always add paint blue, which I did the other day, which was really pretty, or white linen to it. We've got this fancy camera. Let me. Uh... So I guess I'm not really helpful. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> I would do the white or the gray and the mint or the paint blue to start out. Yeah. That, that, those would be my two because you could use the, the paint blue for a good undercoat and it's just a good gray in general. And then also you could use the, the white for like underneath stenciling or so oh go ahead or uh decoupage I gotta get this you can actually decoupage with any of the top coats that we sell if you're in a pinch but this is the cadillac of decoupage mediums and a little bit goes a long way for crafting it's all natural water-based it's not like mod podge that's all clunky and plasticky um, it's a really top quality product um, and it's diy's liquid patina in crystal clear chandelier what is Mara call it? It's a secret sauce. Mara does call it. You can it also sauce. use it for as a sealer, and you can also use it as a image transfer so if gel. If you're using it as a sealer, it is pretty matte. Yeah, and if you're somewhere super humid and you put on lots and lots of coats, it takes forever to cure. Are we if, distressing these so we can like distress the edges? Um, yeah, and I was gonna I was gonna paint up over the edge, I think, okay. but maybe maybe not. Maybe I'll just. I tried to cut them pretty exact. You did really good. Okay. We'll see what we do. I mean, there's a couple little spots that are perfect. Missy, we are selling Debbie's new brushes. The Debbie's new brushes, if you guys have seen them, will be up on our website Friday for pre-order. Caitlin already has them set to go live Friday. And then they're scheduled to ship middle to the end of January. So as soon as we get them in, we'll ship them out. So you see how that brightened up that image, just putting it on there, um, even on this pink, which isn't as going to be as bright as the white. Um, once that dries, it'll, it'll get even brighter and it will still have a little bit of this sheen, but most of what you're seeing is it's just wet. So what we'll do when he's done is the next step will be to add some crackle in the paint color that's underneath. So let me go get a brayer cause you're going to need that. And we're going to bray the pink paint onto the IOD stamp and then crackle it over the top. So it looks like the paint underneath is crackling through. Be careful though. If you use cottage colors on your stamps. Do not let it sit on them because it has a built in sealer. So anytime you use a paint that has a built in sealer, you got to wash them right away or at least spray some cleaner and soak them. I got my brayer so we can do that. I'm using very little of this liquid patina. These hearts are pretty small. I don't need a ton. I'm just, I'm just saturating the edges and then tamping them down with the edge of the brush. We may have to come back and do a little distressing or if Jamie paints over those, see how that goes. Because this is scalloped, and so they may not adhere everywhere. I don't think I'm going to need to paint over those. I think I'm just paint on the edge. But I we're out of paper plates. Do you want me to go down to the basement? Like, what are we going to bray on? Um, yeah, go ahead and go. I can I can help them out here. Right. I haven't had to disappear yet today. If you're just joining, I'm, I'm a little sick. We talked about that earlier. 
<laughs> so now you get to watch my hands. So just a thin, thin layer of that works great. And then I'm just, so these are all cut just a little different. But I think that'll be okay. We can distress, we can paint up to the edge. If you wanted to, you could tear the edge in a heart shape and give it kind of more of an organic feel um, rather than painting it or painting it, um, cutting it with the scissors. Got it. Our basement is a scary place. There's no lighting because we haven't done the electrical. That's a hot mess. Where do you got the heater at? I'm gonna have to take this jacket off. Um, that is a really warm sweatshirt. It is. I picked this sweatshirt up in England, and they know how to make sweatshirts. This hoodie is amazing. We got it. If you guys are from the UK, we bought it from the Next at Ext. It's sixty-seven. Is it 67 degrees in here? That <laughs> uh, means I probably need to take I'm a little warm in this sweatshirt, too. Um, are you guys done Christmas shopping? Um, Zeb has bought nothing. <laughs> and I have purchased for the kids. They're mostly done. I just have to do stockings. But Zeb and I usually like to do that together. I put my input in, and Jamie's like, good, because I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we don't really, like... This year, we have definitely decided that our kids are not without anything. Yeah, really. we don't like to buy a ton. And so we're not going crazy for Christmas. Um, they, we, we were like, well, what do they need? Um, and, and they really didn't need anything. And then we were like, what do they want? And they have pretty much everything they want. They don't ask for much. Um, so we're like, you know what, let's just have fun with it. We're going to do some thrifted stuff. We're going to take them thrifting. And Next week, we're taking them all to the thrift store. They're, they're drawing games for each since other. Since we have five kids, we don't have everybody buy a present for everyone. We we draw names, and then you get a gift for that person. Yeah, we usually give them like 20 bucks. Um, and Zeb and I don't and like... We always get something from mom and dad. Yeah, Zeb and I don't typically buy a ton for each other. Occasionally, Zeb will be buy me something splashy like... It's usually a kitchen appliance. <laughs> Last year for Christmas, I got an ice maker that everybody enjoys. It's the Pebble Ice. Oh, man. That has been like the <laughs> best present I think I've ever gotten for you. Like at least the most used. Yeah, very much used. <laughs> and then um, for my birthday, I got a new mixer, which was a present for him too because I make him bread. I've been making butter in it. <laughs> yeah, I used it, I made, used it yesterday, Jack, and I made tortillas. I splurged and got the big seven-quart uh, industrial KitchenAid or commercial or what, professional, I think is what they call it, KitchenAid mixer for her birthday. That's the one I painted copper. All right, I'm going to try to... And it has paid for itself already. <laughs> I'm going to try to heat gun a few of these. Again, with the liquid patina, if you heat gun, just be super careful. Move it a lot because it will bubble up. See, I like this, how this one fits and there's a little edge. I should have put them all a little small. Well, that's what I thought you were doing, but well, it's all right. Yeah. I can distress the edges and make them smaller and then we'll touch it up with paint. All right, so we'll bring you back up here. This, that's the kitchen aid I'm talking about. Caitlin, can you drop the copper one so I, I paint Can it. you drop the link to the brand of my uh, ice maker? Let me go on my... Hold on. All right, it's sorry to shake you guys. Profile, Opal, Opal, it's the Opal. Yeah. Last year, he had to search everywhere to get it. Well, they were like on a shortage. I really had to go far and wide. And he to told find me he that. couldn't find it. He likes to be sneaky like that. I always surprise you with something, although this year I struggled because I had to mix it for your birthday. And I'm kind of hard to buy for because I'm not a diamond and pearl girl. Uh, if I need, a, if I have a beauty product, I have it or I carry it at my shop. And yeah, I don't know. So some of these little pans have holes in the top. We'll probably drill a hole in the ones that don't. I think three of them do and three of them don't. And that way, like you could put a little ribbon in there or or uh, tie a bow or something on the top of it. There's really nothing wrong with secondhand stuff because we sell. Secondhand items every day. 
People want them. Actually, probably more than anything else, we sell secondhand. Secondhand items. items and DIY supplies. We do have wholesale items. Okay, do you want to do a? You think we need? I think we need a second coat of decoupage on there. Liquid and, patina. Or you know what? Before you do that, let's do the crackle. Oh yes. Okay, we're we're dry enough for that. So okay. I've got you a plate. So this is the brayer. This is the new version of the IOD crackle stamp, and it's good. It's got big crackle. It's got like chunks of chippiness. It's got this big crackle here and then the really fine crackle. So you can see which ones we use. The fine one gets used a lot. <laughs> My kids love start, like thrifted clothes and stuff are super fun. In fact, Redrick wore a shirt the other day that we got at DI. Um, so that's oh. always a fun thing to do. And it's so like green and good for the environment because clothes are something fast fashion. There's just so much, but I don't have time to get into my opinion about all that stuff. I try, I try to be good. Um, Marcia says, do you ever go to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir performances? She just watched one on PBS. Uh, but we did go one year to Music and the Spoken Word. Yeah. And watch them in Salt Lake. We don't go a ton because we like to, so they there's a limited amount of tickets that we like to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to go. So they had a uh, and it's now the Christmas devotional just recently. Oh, yeah. And the choir sang a bunch and they had a big orchestra that they were singing with and it was awesome. It's now called. That's on YouTube. You can watch the that. Choir, Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square. Yeah. Something like that. That's what they call it. <laughs> Formerly known as name. the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, Motab. So here's a little history of our church. It's called. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is a mouthful. We can also call it the Church of Jesus Christ because that's also what it is. But a lot of people refer to us as Mormons because we read the Book of Mormon. Um, but that doesn't have any reference to Christ in the Book of if Mormon. If you don't work fast, that's not going to work. The Book Sorry. of Mormon <laughs> to, not to interrupt your... <laughs> is a testament of Jesus Christ. And we wanted to get away from... M Mormon was a prophet in the Book of Mormon. But he's not Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. So that's why there's so a, now oh, that's oh, why the tickle, change in just the name. tickle. I don't want the whole thing. We got the whole thing. I didn't realize what you wanted. I was telling a story. I know I was about to tell you. All right. So I'm gonna anyway, show you. So the now way. you have the history on why the name got changed. <laughs> All right. So we've got this rolled on here with the brayer. This is the IOD, I think it's vintage textures. You get four different texture stamps. You're just gonna place it on and just tickle it because you don't want the whole image to be gone. And then I'm going to show you up close what this does. And it makes it look like an old piece of artwork the paint has crackled through. Luckily, that? that decoupage was already dry. Ta -da! So we're going to do that to all of them. If you want to know if this is wipeable, one coat of the liquid patina, I had paint on this and wiped it wet. And she's, she's still good to go. That didn't focus. Hang on. Oh, um, sorry. He didn't get it on Amazon. I think he got it at Best Buy, but I, it's Opal, O-P-A-L. I can get you a I, link I later, too. I had to order it from Best Buy in California. And hope it came on time. all of their stores were out. This technique can be used anytime you use decoupage paper. So really, whatever your base coat is, you're wanting to put it on your stamp. And then you're going to tickle your image. And then it will look like the paint is cracking through your image. Marcia says, sorry, I made you make a mistake. That's okay. Between my ADHD and Zeb's sick brain, the two of us are ha have a hard time staying on task. Yesterday, we were doing our business coaching. We go live once a week in our oh, business man, coaching group. I and I had to tap him on the knee a few times to be like, but where are we going with this? I had a point I was making. <laughs> That's really cute. I like that I brought one. it full circle. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to do the second coat on these. Oh, you might want to heat gun it. No, oh. I'm second coating the sides. It doesn't matter. Sorry, could you add the link for the stencils as well? Um, you, for the stamps we used or for stencils, we can send you a link to all of our stencils if you need that. The stamp, I think, is the vintage textures. Um, I don't have the page that it comes with. So I'm just going to go over the edge so a I little bit. I don't know what the name is. That way exactly. it's not such a sharp line. Also, I'm not that neat of a painter to where I can't go over the edge. Yeah, the crackle is the best part. This morning as I was thinking about this design, and yes, I come up with every design the morning of. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a day in advance. Oh, I got too much. I was like, how can I make these look just a little bit better? And they'd be so cute with glitter, too, if you like glitter. And you could add, um, the other thing about this, you could add dark wax. 
you wanted kind of a more rustic romantic look we will come back and do a second coat of decoupage on the top and around the edges thank you caitlin she dropped the link to the vintage textures iod stamp like i said the stamp actually comes with four different textures and you can do this technique with any of the textures just use your base coat and bray it on you can use ink on the stamps but i find with this stamp I wind up really using more paint than anything. But like I said, if your paint has a built-in top coat, which this one does, do not, do not let it sit on your stamp long-term. When you're done, you get that in water. Or if you don't have time to wash it, just like submerge it. It's silicone, it can handle it. All right, I'll bring you for a close-up, but I gotta rinse this out. Yeah, we got, so he's gotta follow my instructions there. All right, we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna use my brush to push it over. Um, you can kind of see on camera how I just went over the edge with it a little bit. And then we will um, decoupage it one more time. And then if I find some ribbon, I can show you guys how we're gonna hang these. Uh, I'm gonna borrow your heat When did Zeb go full time with me? It's Bill, it will be eight years in It'll April. It'll be eight years, April 24th. Ironically, I can't tell you the dates of any of my promotions that I had with Discount tire, but I can tell you the exact day that I quit still. <laughs> <laughs> it was a happy day. It was it's scary, a, but... It was a great company to work for. I was just never really... I, I worked hard at it, and I really tried to make it go, but I was never passionate about tires. Like, I never loved tires. And some guys love tires. <laughs> and he got... I don't know if you guys have heard the story. Someday we'll get our book finished, but... Zeb got passed over for promotions four times in a year, and he was absolutely the most qualified, and not just by my words. Like well, the every, guys that got it were still, they were good, but I was some of them, equally as good, I thought, you know. He was better, and I'm not just saying that. But the you truth know, you're is... you're always the best in your own mind, right? The truth is that, that this needed to happen for the both of us, for our family, and we would never have just left on our own. It took a lot of things you know sometimes you know when they say that when one door opens another door when one door closes another door opens at the time that it kept happening Zeb was devastated it was hard for me as his wife to see him so like sad every time somebody else got the promotion he didn't but what we didn't know was it was heavenly father pushing us towards him quitting his job and coming home because he worked so much um he was gone a lot and so are you oh. second coating decoupaging these? No, I'm gonna wait, wait till, until only that. do the ones that are. This. I'm gonna wait until okay. that peaks dry. And it's still a huge risk every time we do something new, you know. And we got a lot of kids, and we're growing, and we've got employees. But it's been a huge blessing to us, to our employees. Hopefully, it's been a blessing to you guys that we've taught you a few things. So it's definitely been worth it. We need a blooper video. We've done a few of those. They never do well. Like nobody ever watches them. Every live video, there's a blooper. Yeah, I was gonna say the live videos are essentially like an <laughs> hour thing. long of bloopers and what's Jamie gonna say? Or like I was talking about holding a rooster down the other day, and I said you can do it with kids too, meaning you can have kids hold the rooster down, you know, and then there'll be in like a 20-minute backpedal conversation about don't hold your kids down. <laughs> Oh, well, I wasn't the only one that thought that it sounded like that. That's why I had to make sure people knew that you meant like have show the kids how to show the rooster who is dominant. Yeah. I went, I so think it was to help your rooster not be me. <laughs> that was the brass tax of it. Which one do I need to do? You keep doing the wrong one. This one? I'm just doing them if they're wet. All right. Well, these ones are second coated. Deborah says, even if I can't afford anything, you guys are a big blessing. Thank you. Just being here with us, sharing you know, out our videos, commenting. That is a huge help. And we appreciate you being here. I have noticed more and more people sharing out our videos. Oh, I was going to say something because people said they weren't getting notifications. So if you go onto YouTube where it says like or what is it? Subscribe. Subscribe. You can click it where you get the notifications bell and then click notify all. You're going to have to do that every so often because YouTube unclicks it for people so double check and make sure that's done and then if you're on facebook 
where it says follow, you can, there's a drop down menu and you can tell Facebook you want to see every notification when we go live, when we do a new post, and then you will see us more in your feeds because we put out videos every day. Facebook and YouTube have the ultimate control over whether you see us or not. And I think sometimes they don't, we don't fit their mold or whatever. And so they promote other things that they think people want to see. If you want to see us, make sure you guys are clicking those things so that way. It is still sounding like crazy out there. All right, it is. That poor neighbor across the street. She has because she's north facing. Yeah, she's. She's got to keep that driveway scooped. I don't think you've shoveled our driveway at all. Well, Russ plowed it with his plow. He plowed hers too, but she's getting all the last little scrapings off. Yeah, our neighbor has a little quad with a shovel on the front okay so once they're dry we need to do one more coat of decoupage to really suck that paper down <laughs> do you want to sand these edges where it looks like you brushed them a little at first um yeah we can it's got to be really dry and not hot and then we can do the last bit of decoupage every time you sand it if it's been decoupaged i suggest doing more paint or sealer so that way it's really coated. All right, there's one more. We're almost done here. It's 1056. We're making good time. Make sure you guys don't miss out on the Cottage Colors paint sale, jamierayvintage.com. And if you always want to know what's on sale, we actually have a sale collection. And so we'll put everything in there. Yeah, so it's up at the top of the screen, like first, I think it's the first listing. Yeah. So there's things that are in there and we put other random things in there. Usually once a week. I make room for new stuff and I will add things like last week we had some shirts that were on sale and then we had some rusted trim tomorrow I might add a few more things we'll go live in the shop hopefully we've got to do next <laughs> tomorrow I need Zeb to feel better otherwise I'm going to be on my own with Zeb Jack's third grade class we are stenciling flower sack towels for their mom for Christmas it's going to be real interesting with a bunch of eight-year-olds but I think we can do it I'm just going to bring the heat gun, I think. Or should we bring the iron and the board? The heat seal them for them. Well, by the time the first group gets done. They'll we... be dry. You're going to have to show them how to use not a lot of paint. Ellen, thank you. T Tatiana says, love them. Yeah, they're so cute. And you can do them for any holiday. I'm thinking about doing St. Patrick's Day paper. Um, maybe won't we'll order as much. But then we'll have all the holidays covered. We have Halloween. We, have we need to find images for Fourth of July. That has been I've been seeing people tricky. use the Halloween one because it has that big image of the the lady sitting on the moon with the owl, and they've been using that all year round. Okay, Les wants to know how is my mom? She's good. She's in Arizona with my sister Deborah. She's about to go to Karen's, and she will see my sister Renee. On my sister Renee is flying into Mesa and then headed back to Yuma, where she's from. So. Hey, fat boy tunes. That's my nephew, Ben. Um, we love you. We love you too, Ben. How are you guys feeling? Hopefully uh, you don't have the virus over at your house. All right. Did you sell those puppies yet? Ben has the cutest little puppies. Are we sanding the edges? Yes. Where's the sandpaper? It's right here. Yeah. I'll let you do it. My nose. You can so I'm do just gonna the light distressing. Um, you have a dog that's not happy with you. I know. I put Co like, Cody cannot go a full hour without barking, so I put him in the room for uh, for these live streams. And he is scratching at the door. I'm probably going to have to repaint that door soon. He suffers from separation anxiety. I held him for a solid 45 minutes this morning while I was doing my work on my phone, making a reel, texting Debbie, working with my pencil manufacturer. But then I was like, Cody, I got to go back to work. It's really not distressing off much, so I think just put another coat and that'll suck that down really good. I'm using 220 sandpaper. It's about right for this particular texture. It'll distress a little bit, and anywhere where there was like a wrinkle, it gives it a good little age and then flattens it. So you don't have to do this step. I just think it's really cute. Really good at like take the brush and mush it underneath there. Just a couple little lips on these ridges. Ben says they're virus free so far. Two little ones left, but they are too cute. I may have a pack now. <laughs> My nephew Wouldn't Ben has. Be your I mean, fourth... 
if you kept two, that how would be how many dogs out. does that make? I can't I cannot fault him because we now own over 40 animals, but some of our animals make us breakfast. So yeah. And lunch and dinner. And cheese and uh yogurt. Zeb needs a nap and some soup for sure. He's been napping. I made potato I am soup not with bone keeping broth. The soup in. It has been a struggle. Yeah. I'm I'm doing my best. I'm a pretty good little nurse. He does not like to be nursed. So that's also a struggle. All right, would, did you just do this one? All right, I'm gonna use my little finger, see if I can get this down in all those cracks. On a bright side, the bathroom's done and I'll probably have that video edited by tomorrow. Yep, we'll put that up for Thursday's video. It might be the only edited video this week. We'll see. I need to go look in the barn and see if there's some furniture I can paint. There's a ton you can paint in there, but a lot of it needs some love. Well, after this video, remember when we started that little table for Waste Not Wednesday oh, and yeah. I said we'll it's never finish it? Still in the I garage. think I'm going to finish that because we've sold a few side tables in the shop. And so you know, if I had a couple hours when I was feeling well, um, we could clean that garage out enough to uh, park in there. So All I'm doing right now is just kind of pushing that sealer that he just brushed on kind of over the little bubbled edges. These are so cute. All right. Do we have one you can dry and you want to add some dark wax to it? You, want that? you think that'd be cute or no? Um, we just I'm going to leave them as they look. <gasps> they're nice and bright. You know what would be cute is a little, do you think, what about I copper patina something. on the edge? Copper oh, we're patina. out. Ooh, I used the last one on my Jesus picture. Do you guys want to see that? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom gonna you in and show, show you guys. Picture. Do you guys remember this one from Saturday? I, I shouldn't, I'm super sad. I'm okay that I used the last of my copper patina on this, but look at this. Copper patina and dark wax. It's not like you don't have more at the shop. Oh, I know. I just don't have any here. I think I'm going to add one more element around the edge, either glitter or copper patina. They're kind of shiny still. There we go. So if you guys have cottage colors and yeah, you want to richen it up, now. Feel free to add any of the DIY paint to them just a little bit at a time and that will help you out because this color here is the original color, vintage pink, and here it is with maybe a fourth uh, teaspoon. I don't know that they can see. Oh, yeah, can they not see it? it Sorry guys. I'll bring it closer so you guys can see the difference in shade of a little teeny tiny bit of DIY paint. Here's the pink. Yeah, I think that's the best they've ever seen the vintage pink. It usually shows up so bright on camera. It's like a peachy pink. Yeah. And how much did you add of the uh, Oh gosh, like the kissing booth? 20 parts, 30 parts vintage pink to one part kissing booth. It's so pigmented, the DIY paint, that it's basically like adding straight up pigment to your paint, so it doesn't take very much. All right, um, jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products. And if you like this video, for sure, share it out. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. We will see you later. Have a great Wednesday.